right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cross for Life Light Week 4 virtual weekly show update. I'll be one of your hosts today. I'm Ashley McMillan, the Director of Annual Giving at Life Light Foundation. We're so excited to be kicking off week four of August, but also week four of your crossing. Uh, we have a lot of exciting things to go over today. We're going to announce the contest winners for the fundraising contest last week, trivia contest winners, photo contest winners. Uh, we'll also be announcing a new uh, fundraising contest, and we're going to hear from a few special folks. But just to get started, I want to give you a brief event update. As of about 7 o'clock this morning, we had 152 participants. We've crossed 1,273 miles, and we've raised $261,280. So that's amazing. As we go into the last full week in August, we're just challenging you all to keep going. Um, we do have a goal to reach 300000 by the end of the month. So that's about another seven days. So we're just challenging you to, to all stay connected and stay in it. But before we go into the program, I'm going to toss it over to Mark and he'll introduce yourself and get going. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Ashley. I appreciate it. And again, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. It's great to be part of this uh, really special event. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Mark O'Donnell. I am a vice president over here at Camden National Bank right in uh, beautiful downtown Camden. And uh, I'm going to go over some of the event statistics that we have uh, for the week. So first off, uh, another big number, it looks like um, total miles crossed as of today is 1,273 miles um, versus a goal of 1,800 miles. So, you know, while it's a great achievement, it looks like there's a little way to go there. Um, and then as far as some of the individuals with the most miles, um, I'd like to recognize these three folks. Um, first off, we have Aaron Sandler, who has uh, achieved 331 miles and those are 330 on a bike and one walking. And then we have Samantha Winston, who has uh, logged 91 miles. And there's 78 of those hiking, nine of them running, and four looks like in other activities. And then Sue Farah uh, has a, an, another uh, great achievement of 65 miles, which looks like 62 miles of hiking and three miles of uh, paddling altogether. So fantastic news for those three individuals. And again, thanks for your contributions. And then from a team standpoint, it looks like the team with the most miles as of right now is um, Team North Haven with a whopping 294 miles uh, on their team, which is crazy. And those are broken down with 107 miles swimming, 187 miles hiking, 115 miles running, 56 miles paddling, um, 477 miles biking, walking 293 miles, and then in the other category, Looks like we had uh, a, a number of 38 miles, and it looks like Wade Smith, captain of Team 10, has been out there rollerblading while collecting donations. So uh, pretty impressive numbers there from, uh, you know, from all those participants. Yeah, it's awesome to see all the different ways people are out there crossing. And just to note, you'll hear a little bit more about Samantha Winston and Sue Fair a little bit more in the program. So we can keep going on to the fundraising contest that wrapped up last week. So um, the results were as of Friday, August 20th at noon. And um, you know we were blown away by how many people were eligible for these fundraising contests. So we hope you all enjoy your prizes. Um, the winners we will contact after today's show and we will be in touch. So for the 350 band, there's a choice of a $25 CDOG gift card or a road ID safety identification bracelet, which is fabulous while everyone is out there crossing. We're, um, you know, we're big fans of safety at LifeLight. So those winners are Jess Keenan, Susan Most, Jeremy Phelan, Mary Weicker, and Melissa Weinberg. Um, the next level is the $750 fundraise. And that is a choice of a main made custom curbage board or a guided two hour sunset sea kayak tour um, from Portland Paddle. So that winner is Ashley Moore. And then the $2,000 bracket um, is a choice of a sea bag or a schooner OLAD sailing cruise for two with a picnic. And that is Tay Carpenter. So again, congratulations. We are so excited with how many people were eligible for these prizes. So we will be in touch with you. Um, later on today, and we will coordinate getting you your prizes. And again, stay tuned for later on this program. We have another fundraising contest that is kicking off today that will go through the end of August. 
Um, and I guess while we're on contest, we might as well keep going. So why don't we talk about the photo contest, Mark? Oh, Mark, I think you're on mute. You muted yourself, bud. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> it would be Monday morning if I didn't make a blooper here. But I uh, <laughs> just wanted to th say thanks again, Ashley, and wanted to well uh, congratulate, rather, all the contest winners. And, you know, speaking of contests, this week's photo contest winners, um, let's just see here. First off, we've got our best team shot, which was submitted by John Rex Waller, and that's Team Islesboro. So, so congratulations to uh, Team Islesboro. And then it looks like we have, excuse me, the best individual shot uh, in the runner up category is Anna McDonough. And there's a picture of her with the, uh, looks like the morning sun right behind her there on her bike. And then from a best individual shot, it looks like we have a beauty of a shot by, submitted by Susan Cook. So thank you very much for that, Susan. And then in the final shot, just being the iconic main shot, that was submitted from Samantha Winston. Another beauty of, you know, again, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing here, but somewhere, you know, looking out over the mountains of Western Maine, but it certainly looks beautiful there. Yeah, great photos. Again, thank you everyone for submitting them. Please continue to remember to submit them this week. Again, you can submit them on the tracker, which is tracker.crossforlifelight.org, or if it's easier, just send them in an email to photos at crossforlifelight.org, and we will get them um, eligible for the contest. And again, for this contest, we'll be in touch with the winners. Um, but now we just want to talk a bit, little bit more about all these exciting crossings that we're hearing about and just highlight a few of them. Um, so again, I mentioned Sue Farah and Samantha Winston. So you will notice that they were numbers two and three in miles, and they are a mother-daughter duo, mother duo, and they just have an awesome crossing story that I want to share with everyone. So Samantha, um, she's actually on sabbatical from work, and she decided to do what she has always wanted to do, which is travel. So she rented a camper van, she grabbed her mom, and the two of them spent 10 days, they went to four states, they went to four national parks, and they hiked nearly 70 miles to complete their epic adventure. Um, now that they're back in Maine, I think we just saw photos that Samantha won, um, but she's still continuing exploring. She took a ferry to Monhegan and she hiked Borstone Mountain. This week, she's also backpacking in the Skudik Peninsula and Tumble Down. So I'm guessing that might have been the Tumble Down picture. Um, and she mentioned that that hike was on her bucket list for a while. And not only are they outdoor enthusiasts, what's really amazing is Sue. Um, she is a nurse practitioner out on North Haven. So she truly, truly, truly gets the need for life flight. So it's just amazing to see people who understand what we're doing and who are out there crossing and honestly just making fun of it. Um, one of these photos that you'll see is they were at Yellowstone together and they're on Avalanche Peak in early August. So they summited a 10,000 foot peak. So you ladies seriously rock, way to go. Um, and kind of while we're celebrating hiking, the other photo that you see there is from the Cook family. So you just saw Sue Cook's individual photo, but you also might remember that Sue and Jim Cook were on last week's show. So Jim actually is a former Life Flight patient who was transported um, after a heart attack and Sue is participating um, in his honor. So you'll see them here on Mount Katahdin and they have a great story. So Jim, while hiking up Katahdin actually blew out the sole of his hiking boot and like a true Mainer, he had duct tape, he taped the sole of his boot, kept going, made it back down and then um, their adult children went on and summited. So it's just really cool to see these crossings. We're just super excited about it. Um, and again, so keep submitting them. You can tag us on Facebook and we'll continue to share all these exciting crossings that are happening. But I'm going to kick it back to you, Mark. So I did mention earlier um, our total fundraising, but I think we can look at too um, the, our top individuals and top teams and where they're at right now. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Ashley. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the, and, and again, these are hot off the presses. It looks like the uh, fundraising update came out about seven o'clock this morning. So we've got some uh, really impressive numbers to walk through here. So first off, just from an overall standpoint, um, it looks like as of again, seven o'clock this morning, the total raise was $261,280. So again, just a really big number there. And from an individual standpoint, um, the three folks I wanna recognize this morning would be uh, 
Owen Howell with uh, $8,700 raised individually. Um, in second place was Aaron Sandler with $6,835. And then Evie Blum at $6,150. And then from a team standpoint, the top three teams that we have that we want to recognize today would be in the number one slot, Team 10 with $35,365. Wow. Um, team Islesboro with a whopping $28,520. And then the St. George Helicopter Mamas and Papas, that name always gets me, uh, mm -hmm. 17811 So just a fantastic job from a, from a fundraising standpoint. And congratulations to, uh, you know, to everyone who worked so hard to put those, uh, put those numbers up for uh, LifeLight. Yeah, it's really amazing. And as we're talking about fundraising, um, we've been giving weekly tips. So I'll give you your tip this week is just to leverage your goals. So, you know, when you set up your fundraising page, um, you set your goal and that goal doesn't have to be static. Um, as you continue to work towards the goal, many of you are either at your goal, or exceeded your goal. So we encourage you to bump it up if you can. Um, it's, when you send to your donors, you know, we find that it's motivating for donors to want to support you and bump you up over the goal. So again, keep move, keep pushing, keep moving. If you do need help um, updating your page, we can also do that as well. Just send us an email and we can help you move those goals forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then as we move on, so we are going to have a patient and participant spotlight today. And this one is really special and really inspiring. So Casey Ford, she is a team member on Team Chiwanki. Again, she has a very incredible story. So a few years ago, Casey Ford was visiting friends on Matinicus Island, which is about 20 miles um, off the coast of Penobscot Bay. So as they were heading back to the mainland on a small plane, the plane suddenly lost power and went into the ocean. Um, thankfully, the four people on the plane did survive, but they were clinging to the cargo pod in the plane in the ocean for an hour. And not unusual, Matinicus um, and other remote Maine islands, they, they don't have healthcare facilities out there. So they had to wait, they had to get a plane to Owls Head Airport where ambulances were waiting there to transport the patients to Penn Bay Medical Center. So when they got to Penn Bay Medical Center, um, Life Flight's two aircrafts were there. They were waiting to kind of assess the patients and see who would need to be transported. So they checked on Casey. Um, her blood pressure was suddenly dropping, which indicated some major internal injuries. So the Life Flight crew quickly got her loaded up and they took her to Central Maine Medical Center, which is about 23 minutes um, via air. So when she got there, the trauma team evaluated her and she certainly was in rough shape. Um, she had a fractured vertebrae in her lower back. She had shredded the protective surrounding area of her spinal cord. And she also had partially transected her abdominal aorta, which is um, very dangerous and could be life-threatening. So the trauma team got her there, got her taken care of. She was at Central Maine Medical Center for 15 days. Most of that was in the ICU. Um, and what's crazy is today she's happy, healthy, and thriving, and she has been a past Islesboro Crossing participant and also a Cross for Life Flight participant. Um, sh she and her team, Team Chiwanki, did their crossing this past weekend, so you'll hear from Casey, Megan, Lorna, and Lily, and they're just sharing why they cross. So I'd like to introduce Team Chiwanki, who sent us a video in this weekend. Hi, I'm Casey Ford, and I'm here <laughs> with my team, Chiwanki teammates. And we just finished our swim paddle around this fungus bay. And I just wanted to share that I do this swim because I was life flighted. And life flight saved my life 10 years ago. I was on a small plane that actually crashed into the ocean behind me, miles out. And I wouldn't be here without them. And they are amazing and experts at what they do, and I would do just about anything to help support my life. And swimming and paddling with these lovely women today was really an outstanding experience. This is my seventh crossing, by the way. My name is Megan Phillips. Uh, I'm here with Team Chuanki. This is my fifth crossing, and I cross because many years ago Casey told me her story, and it changed me. And I feel like every time that I tell, that, that when, I, when I ask people, 
uh, to support my crossing, there's always like, oh, my flight, you know, saved my mother's life or life flight transported this friend. You know, everybody has a friend or a family in this rugged rural state whose life was changed by the work that life flight does. Hi, my name is Lorna Fake and this is my third crossing. And I've enjoyed every crossing I've done. It's a challenge, but it's also feels good to have your kayak beside you and swimming co mates, friends with her name. I'm Lily Pew. This is my fifth crossing. Um, I'm from Alna and I, I, I've got a great team helping to support Life Flight, which um, has touched people here on this point. Um, somebody from just next door to us here in Friendship um, was life flighted. So um, it, we, I know it, it touches us so many. And I'd love to be on this Team Chiwanki. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, happy to support life flight. <laughs> That's a great video. And if you couldn't see at the end, um, they held up a little sign that said, swimming is easier than flying a um, medical helicopter, which probably is true, but also swimming is very challenging. So kudos to you, Team Chawanki. Um, and it's, it's great to see participants and past patients out there. Um, and also like you can tell Casey has such a strong support system with her teammates, with her family support, um, especially her husband, Matt Russ, which actually leads me to our next fundraising contest, which we're super excited about. Um, so this is going to kick off today. And if you remember last week's contest, there are similar guidelines as last time. So again, this contest is in addition to the already great main incentives that you're receiving at 7,500, uh, excuse me, 750, 1,500, 3,000, and then also our new Peak, per Peak Performers Club at 3,500. And again, this is um, for each person slash participant. So if you are on a team, um, each individual on a team would need, or yourself needs to reach this fundraising level. And all donations are through Tuesday, August 31st at 12 midnight. So that gets us right through the end of the month. And I'll start with the first category, which is if you reach the 350 minimum fund fundraising level by Tuesday, August 31st at midnight, then um, three people will win a road ID similar, similar to last week. Um, if you reach $1,000, you could win a chance to be selected to, to win one of these great Cross for Life Light sweatshirts. And we just got some, of the, some in and they are great quality. And then 1,500, you could win a chance to be selected for a winner in a one night in a Maine forest yurt, which is in Durham, Maine. And um, very exciting prize. And then one that we are super thrilled about. So if you reach 2,500, you will be in for a chance to be the selected as the lucky winner of this Matt Russ painting. So this painting is of Penobscot Bay from Duck Trap Mountain. It is oil on panel and it is 12 by 18. It's valued at $2,000. What is especially special <clears throat> about this for us is Matt Russ is Casey Ford's husband. He's a famous Maine painter and um, we're just thrilled to be able to have this connection to offer this prize. And oh, I can miss, I want to keep going. Um, and then, so $5,000 is a chance to be selected as a lucky winner to tour a Life Flight base, Life Flight of Maine base. That's great, Ashley, and thanks. That sounds like a great contest, and I bet it'll really amp up the, uh, the fundraising this week for sure. I'd also like to talk about last week's winner of the, uh, the trivia question. <clears throat> And last week's question was, how many Maine communities had life flight transports in the past 12 months? Um, the answer was 136. And the winner is uh, Claire Sasner, who had the closest guest with 150. So congratulations to Claire. And I'm sure we'll be in touch with her shortly about her, uh, about her prize. 
And then to move on to this week's question, um, this week's question is um, how many remote landing zones does the life flight of, does life flight of Maine have? Pardon me. And basically what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna think about that question and submit your answers uh, by commenting on the recorded post of the weekly update that we're doing now. And that's posted on the Cross for Life Fight page. Or you can email the answer directly to the email address below, which is eventmanager at crossforlifeflight.org. And again, that's eventmanager at crossforlifeflight.org. And the winner closest to the correct answer will be announced at our next weekly update on uh, Monday the 30th. Great. Yeah, we've really enjoyed these trivia questions. It's given everyone kind of a chance to learn a little bit more about LifeLight and kind of just the impact that we're having across the state. Um, speaking of, so you've heard us say, I think I've, I keep saying it, like it's been a very busy summer. It's been one of the busiest summers for LifeLight. I mean, just a few weeks ago, um, LifeLight had to go to Acadia twice in one day for a transport, which is crazy. So we also recognize that not only are we busy, you guys are all busy, um, summer's winding down, but we're just asking if you could take this next week and just really stay focused on your fundraising as we wrap up the month. Again, get involved in the fundraising contest. We are so incredibly thankful for your support, um, us at the LifeLight Foundation and also at LifeLight of Maine. And they, some of the crew, or one gentleman in the crew took his time to share his gratitude to you all as well. Hey everybody, my name is David Rudolph. I'm one of the flight paramedics down here uh, out of our Lewiston base, uh, most affectionately referred to as Rudy. Been with LifeLight for about five and a half years. And every year I'm always amazed at just how generous your donors are and just how uh, dedicated all of you are to our purpose and our fundraising goals. So I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you for everything that you do for the Life Flight Challenge, the Life Flight Crossing, and all of us here with the organization. Thank you. Great. Um, That's great. So thanks. So thanks a lot for sharing that video, Ashley. That's fantastic. And I just wanted to, uh, just for a kind of a quick reminder, um, you should have seen your emails and on Facebook that the Cross for Life Flight uh, pop-up store has reopened due to popular demand, and you can get your custom Cross for Life Flight, pardon me, shirts, sweatshirts, hats, or a water bottle, and they're all uh, really great quality, like Ashley was saying, so I think you guys would really enjoy them. And it looks like the store is open through uh, the 31st, which I believe is next Tuesday, and then the orders will ship out on the 17th of September for you folks. And also, just a reminder to answer that trivia and submit your photos to the tracker or to the photos at crossforlifeflight.org email address. And also please continue to leave your tracks and stay connected because we certainly love to hear about uh, all those exciting crossings going on out there. Great, thanks Mark. Yeah, and as we wrap up, again, I just wanna take this time to say thank you. We know you guys have all been digging in this month with your crossing, but also with your fundraising. As I mentioned, we're at 261,000 and we are pushing hard and need to do this together to get to 300,000 by the end of the month. So again, if we can just all continue to do this together, put our heads down, and just finish the month strong. Um, and also if you're watching this and you're not participating, one, thanks for watching, but also you can make a general event donation. You can visit our website, it's crossforlifelight.org. And again, you can either make a general event donation or you can search for a participant if you've heard any stories and wanna support them as well. And then just one last reminder, we are doing a final weekly update next Monday, August 30th at noon. So we hope you can join us. And again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.